This is the true sentence that Hemingway was talking about. All right, friends, my name is Elizabeth, and today I'm going to tell you why you should study viral tweets in order to improve your writing. Now, stay with me. This is not about catering to the internet age or tiny attention spans or instant gratification or anything like that. It's actually way simpler and uh, way deeper than that. Understanding what makes a viral tweet viral is the same as understanding what makes a human human. And I'm not just talking about setting up jokes, like how to structure a punchline. You could absolutely learn how to do that by studying tweets. Oftentimes the punchline is expertly set up. But I'm not even talking about comedy. I'm talking about all writing. All writers can improve their craft by studying viral tweets. Are you ready for this? <sighs> Alright, so here is the tweet that made me realize this. Remember those days when you'd miss school and you'd check the time and think, they're eating right now. When I first read that, I like choked laughing. I could not believe that some random person on the internet was able to capture so precisely, like down to the very words that I would say inside my head, something that I used to think years ago as a child. I mean, how can that even be real? I literally used to think the words, they're eating right now. Not my class is at lunch, not it's lunchtime at school, just they're eating right now. To see that in writing was such a fun jolt. Like this friendly reminder that we really are just all people. Living our different lives but feeling very similar feelings. It's a sort of warmth and hopefulness. Like the world isn't all bleak because we are actually all just the same as each other. It's beautiful. And that is the feeling that you want to evoke in your writing. This is, in essence, the very definition of that Hemingway quote. All you have to do is write one true sentence. Write the truest sentence that you know. That is the secret to a viral tweet, and it is also the secret to a novel that connects emotionally with its audience, that packs a gut punch. This is how you gut punch. If you're writing. This is the true sentence that Hemingway was talking about. You write something so small and strange and innocuous that you're sure it's entirely unique to you and your own weirdness, only to discover that half a million other people feel the exact same way, or had the exact same thought, or the exact same experience. That's how you connect both to strangers on the internet and also to people reading your book. And when you are able to include just a few lines throughout your novel that pack this gut punch and connect with people on this deep core level, then you will have them hooked and they'll feel a permanent connection to your book and to you and will always have an eye out for your future books so that they can re-experience that sudden shock of reading something in print that they thought was entirely unique to them. That feeling of belonging in the world as if we really are all in this together. Now, this tweet also has the added power of nostalgia behind it, which is a strong connective force that a lot of writers could use to add depth and meaning to their work if they successfully tapped into it. But even if you're not going for nostalgia, there is still untapped potential in viral tweets and using them to see what connects people. What thoughts and experiences are so small and familiar that you don't even realize that everyone else on Earth also experiences them? That those experiences and thoughts are the very things that actually make us human beings in the 21st century. I don't know if that airplane is ruining my mood here, but, uh... Okay, it's gone. Cool. It's back. What is it doing circling? So, all you have to do to get your book to connect with your readers, to get your readers to connect with your book, is to include these small, true thoughts. Just moments, lines even. Not every line in the book, you know, just, just sporadically throughout the book. Just something that you stumble upon. And then you're golden. You don't have to try to capture the elusive experience of specific emotions in vague words because they won't really resonate. All you have to do is write these tiny truths of your everyday life. Just include them in the story as just little nuggets, you know, no matter what you're writing. It doesn't matter if you're writing something, you know, wild fantasy that happens 5,000 years in the future. Just these small human moments that connect people. Just sprinkle them throughout your book. You know, of what it means to really be human, even when no one else is looking. That is what connects us. Probably especially when no one else is looking. And when you have no intention of ever sharing those thoughts or experiences with anyone else. Because they seem so small and meaningless. Like, who cares that I used to think they're eating right now when I was home from school? That means nothing. But when you encounter a little thought like that unexpectedly in a book, it makes you feel real. Like a real boy. It gives meaning to that little moment. And by extension, to all the little innocuous moments that make up our lives and make us human. Those tiny universal thoughts are what it means to be human. 
And if you include them in your writing, you will bridge that emotional gap that can be so challenging to cross as a writer. When writing emotion, it's easy to spill over into writing big, broad moments using big, grand words, but that will almost always fall flat and not connect. And it definitely won't connect as strongly as being able to give your reader a small piece of themselves within your book. Seeing some small scene from their own life that they thought was unique to them played out on the page. That is magical. And if you've never experienced it, I don't know, you're, you're reading the wrong books, I guess. The wrong tweets. I don't know. Look at these viral tweets and tell me that you don't feel something. I mean, this is what it means to be alive. Also, I don't know if we're supposed to be calling them like Xers or something anymore. I don't know. To me, they're tweets. So uh, that's the word I'm using. A sex scene come on and your parents look at you like you directed the movie. One of my favorite lies to tell myself is that a blueberry muffin is substantially more nutritious than a chocolate chip muffin. Is it just me or are baby carrots getting wetter? Always nice to see my son's apple return home from its daily school outing. Set myself up perfectly once again for the best bite of the sandwich. These next few seconds are going to be so great. People are too casual about the fact that parrots can talk. Turning and facing the shelves every time somebody walks by me in a grocery store, like some kind of Edwardian housemaid who's not supposed to be seen or heard by her ladyship. Everyone else's birthday is on the most random possible day, whereas mine is on the day where it's like, okay, yeah, this is a birthday. 